Hi, I'm Ariel with Lowell Observatory, and here's what's in the sky this December. Saturn will be in the constellation Capricornus. Jupiter will be moving from Capricornus into Aquarius. These planets will be visible in the early evening throughout the month, but will set earlier each night, and by the end of the month, they'll set just after sunset. Venus will be visible in the very early evening sky, moving through the constellation Sagittarius and setting not long after sunset. It will set earlier and earlier throughout the month. Look for it during twilight towards the southwest. Venus is the brightest object in the sky other than the sun and the moon, so it should be fairly easy to spot. Mercury will transition to the evening part of the sky at the beginning of the month, but will remain too close to the sun to easily observe. Mars will be moving through the constellations Libra and Scorpius to Ophiuchus. It will be visible just before sunrise throughout the month and will rise earlier each night. Uranus and Neptune will be visible to those with telescopes for most of the night throughout the month. Uranus will be in the constellation Aries and Neptune will be in Aquarius. This month's new moon will be on December 4th and the full moon will be on December 19th. This month's new moon will be accompanied by a total solar eclipse. However, this eclipse will only be visible from Antarctica and some of the southern Atlantic Ocean around it. A partial solar eclipse will be visible from the southern part of Namibia and the western part of South Africa. A solar eclipse happens when the moon moves in front of the sun, blocking some of its light, and unlike lunar eclipses, each solar eclipse can only be seen from certain parts of the Earth. The solstice will be on December 21st. On this day, the axis that the Earth spins on will be tilted its farthest away from the sun in the northern hemisphere and its closest to the sun in the southern hemisphere. This represents the beginning of astronomical winter in the northern hemisphere and the beginning of astronomical summer in the southern hemisphere. This will also be the longest night of the year in the northern hemisphere and the shortest night of the year in the southern hemisphere. December gives us one of the strongest meteor showers of the year, the Geminids. The Geminids will peak on the evening of December 13th or early in the morning of the 14th. At their peak, the Geminids can produce well over 100 shooting stars an hour. This year's Geminids will coincide with a bright gibbous moon, which will make it hard to see many of the fainter meteors. However, the Geminids are still likely to produce many meteors that will be visible even with the bright moon. Also consider taking advantage of the time between moonset and moonrise when the sky will be dark and the Geminids will still be near their peak. Another strategy would be to choose a night a few nights before the 13th when the moon isn't as bright, but the Geminids will still be visible. Remember, since it's impossible to know when or where a shooting star will happen, they're best observed with the naked eye rather than with binoculars or a telescope. The best way to enjoy a meteor shower is to find a clear, dark, and unobstructed sky, get comfortable, and just look up. The summer triangle of Vega, Deneb, and Altair will remain visible in the early evening throughout the month, but by the end of the month, they'll set just after sunset. The autumn constellations remain prominent throughout nearly the whole night throughout the month. Cassiopeia the Queen forms a W or M shape in the sky and opens up directly towards Polaris, providing an easy way of finding the North Star. Following Cassiopeia is Perseus the Hero. Cassiopeia's stars Navi and Shedar point straight to the great square of the constellation Pegasus, and following Pegasus is Andromeda. Rising earlier and earlier and dominating the late night sky are the spectacular constellations of winter. The first of these to rise is Auriga the charioteer, who follows Perseus in the night sky and contains Capella, the next brightest star in the night sky after Vega. Following Auriga is the constellation of Gemini, the twins, with Castor and Pollux. A bit farther south of Auriga will be the star Aldebaran, the brightest star of Taurus the bull. Aldebaran can be seen in the foreground of the Hyades, a V-shaped grouping and one of the closest open star clusters to us. Aldebaran is led in the sky by the famous Pleiades, another of the closest star clusters. Following Taurus is the brilliant constellation of Orion the Hunter, with the bright stars of Rigel and Betelgeuse. Orion's belt points directly to Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, in the constellation Canis Major, the big dog. Finally, following Gemini will be Procyon, the brightest star of Canis Minor, the smaller dog. Capella, Aldebaran, Rigel, Sirius, Procyon, and Pollux form the Winter Hexagon, a formation of many of the sky's brightest stars. Early risers this month will begin to see the spring constellations of Leo, Ursa Major, and Boates. The December sky is rich with objects that are beautiful to view and easy to find with binoculars. The Hyades and Pleiades are both easily visible to the naked eye and spectacular with even small binoculars. 
In the center of Orion's sword lies the Orion Nebula, the closest large star-forming region to us, and another spectacular binocular target. The closest large galaxy to us, the Andromeda Galaxy, makes for another excellent target. Take the middle star in Andromeda, Miroc, and go a couple stars up towards Cassiopeia to find the galaxy. Its core will appear as a cloudy area barely visible to the naked eye under clear and non-light polluted skies. Another binoculars target is the Perseus Double Cluster. This is a pair of open star clusters rich with extremely massive stars. It can be found almost exactly halfway between the shapes of Cassiopeia and Perseus. Under dark skies, it's visible to the naked eye as a faint bluish glow. December's Deep Sky Challenge is the 37 Cluster. This is a small cluster in the constellation Orion that looks a lot like the number 37 written in the sky. Above Betelgeuse is a thin triangle of fainter stars, often envisioned as Orion's arm or part of his club. Take the two top stars of that triangle. If those two stars were the two upper corners of an equilateral triangle, its third point will be very close to the 37 cluster. That's all for this month's Mars Hill Almanac, and until next time, happy stargazing.